Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And today I'm talking with Logan Goody Beats Delgado. He's the co-owner of Keto Coach and Fitness Coach for the Fast Coach app. He is an expert in keto and intermittent fasting. And so we're so excited to have him. Welcome, Logan. Should I call you Logan? Should I call you Goody Beats? I don't know which uh, one to call you. <laughs> uh, people call me Goody, so we can, we, we, you can call me I'll call me you Goody. Goody. I like it. All right. So tell us a little bit about your history and how did you get started with intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet? Yeah. So, um, it all started when I was 26 years old, I went to the doctor to do a routine, uh, checkup and the doctor was like, dude, what, like you're 26 years old, you have high blood pressure, (laughs) high cholesterol, um, you're you're pre-diabetic And you're going to have to get on some um, high cholesterol pills. Like, what are you doing? Like, you should be in the best shape of your life at 26 years old. And I was like, yeah, I, uh, you know, eating their traditional American diet, right? Over time, it catches up to you. And so I knew, I knew this wasn't me. I knew I needed to make a change like everybody, um, who is overweight, you know, pre-diabetic, dealing with health issues. They know they need to make the change. They just don't know how, and they just don't know what. So, um, again, I took baby steps. I joined a gym and um, started working out, started learning about nutrition, and I ended up meeting a gym buddy who – put me on a ketogenic intermittent fasting plan. Now I was doing this plan before I even knew what keto was before I even knew what intermittent fasting was right. People just don't go into the gym and are, I mean, again, I was level zero everyone. So everyone's listening to this. I was level zero. I knew nothing about nothing. I knew nothing about working out, nothing about nutrition, went to the gym and slowly started learning how to work out, slowly started learning about nutrition. And then my, my, my gym buddy put me on that plan and I got amazing results. I got super lean, super shredded. And people are like, Oh my God, like, what are you doing? Like, wh- how did you do this? And I'm like, I don't know. I just followed this, this plan. And he, you know, he said to eat, <laughs> beef and broccoli and butter and I don't eat till one and <laughs> I gotta have my last one at nine and I drink you know you know and people are like oh my god you're doing the ketogenic diet intermittent fasting I'm like uh yeah yeah that's what I'm doing and so then I started talking about it on my YouTube channel and again this is like 2013 2014 when keto just started to explode and I just turned into like the keto guy and just shared my experience. And ever since then, I've been a huge advocate of intermittent fasting, the ketogenic diet, not only for weight loss, but guess what? I am no longer Mm pre-diabetic. I no longer take Crestor. I no longer have high cholesterol and I know I am, I'm, and I'm no longer on the road to being obese because of the ketogenic diet. So tons of health benefits other than just weight loss, but I understand 90% of the people who do keto and intermittent fasting are doing it for weight loss, but there are tons of health benefits from it. So, and if you're listening to this episode, I always suggest that you watch the episode as well. But I mean, you are built. I mean, I can look yeah. at you. I mean, I, I don't see your whole body, but I can tell like, yeah, you've got some guns on you. So you've got a lot of muscle. And one of the things that people always say is that I hear guys listening and they say things like, no, I don't want to do intermittent fasting because I'm not going to be able to build muscle. And obviously, you know, I look at you and that's not the case. We've had Thomas DeLauer on the show. If you haven't heard that episode, go back and listen to Thomas DeLauer talk about it. But I want you to talk a little bit about how you got so chiseled and how you've got those huge, huge biceps. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, Thomas is a great guy. He's a great friend of mine. And, and the thing with Thomas, Thomas loves to jump into the science of things, like really get into the mm-hmm. the meats and, and potatoes of things, right? He'll really get into the science. Um, I'll just keep it simple. 
So one, intermittent fasting will boost your natural testosterone for fellas. So guys, if you are getting older, your testosterone is obviously going to slow down. One of the best ways to keep it high is to intermittent fast. It's a great way to boost up your testosterone, which is there, which will help you build muscle. But what you have to realize is like, look, when I started intermittent fasting and keto, I was doing it for weight loss, okay? I didn't jump in and say, I wanna do all these things at once. I picked one thing, focused on that. Once I lost, and again, I lost a total of 70 pounds, okay? So dang, dang near a, a little person was, was connected to me and I, I lost a, a, a baby human. So once I lost 70 pounds, guess what? I didn't need to eat and do keto and intermittent fasting the way that I was doing it when I was trying to lose weight. You make adjustments, your goals are gonna change. So once I did that, I started focusing on building muscle, right? What is the best way to build muscle? To be in a calorie surplus, you need to eat food. Just because you're intermittent fasting doesn't mean you need to have low calories. At the end of the day, eat high protein, which again, a lot of people don't like to do, or say, come up to me all the time in the gym, Logan, how do I build my guns up like yours? How do I build muscle? You got to eat and you got to eat protein. So I asked them, what are you eating? Oh, well, you know, I have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this for dinner. And I'm like, okay, you're eating nothing. You need to eat to grow. So having high amounts of protein, also training um, the way that you need to be training, progressive overload, that's going to be part of it, making sure you're getting enough sleep and also incorporating, again, you don't have to do intermittent fasting, but yes, intermittent fasting will help because it will boost your natural testosterone. Doing all those things will help you build muscle. It's never one thing, right? People always want to say, it's one thing. It, it's it's a variety of things, right? Making sure you're getting enough sleep, making sure you're eating the right foods, making sure you're eating enough protein, making sure you're training the way you need to be training. So many times I go into the gym and this is what everyone's doing. Mm. Okay. Well, time for my exercise. And for those who are, aren't watching, what I'm showing is people are in the gym on their phones all the time. In between sets, they're on their phones, right? They're on their phone for about a minute to a minute and a half. You're losing your intensity. You're losing your focus. Go into the gym with a purpose. Go in there with a the passion. Get off your phone. And if you are going to be on your phone, use it to find the next song that's going to motivate you or push you through the next set. Um, mm. But yeah, that that is what it's all about. It's just going in there and doing the right things that you need to be doing. Uh, and again, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, I have been doing this for eight years. I have been training bodybuilding for eight years. And um, so understand to be patient. It's not going to happen overnight. And so I know a lot of people, they want to lose weight and build muscle at the same time. Can you do it? Sure, you can. Is it very hard? Yes. I always say focus on one thing at a time. Mm, I love that. I want to talk about some keto foods that you love and a little bit about keto snacks that are whole foods. One of the things that drives me crazy is when I see people eating kind of these keto snacks that are just completely filled with so many chemicals. And so instead of eating things like, you know, celery and cucumber and carrots and, you know, cheese or eggs or nuts and you know, avocado and things that, you know, are a little bit more, you know, going to fill your body with good good foods, they're kind of filling their self up with some of these keto snacks that maybe are filled with chemicals. Talk to yeah. us about that. Yeah. So I always joke around with people because um, when I started keto, it was in 2013 before keto was popular. Right. So I always say, oh, you know, when someone's starting keto nowadays, I'm like, oh, you know, back in my day, there were no keto treats. There were no keto pizzas keto ice cream, keto muffin, keto cookie, the list goes <laughs> on and on and on, right? There's literally keto 
everything now. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't, it wasn't like that when I started, you had to be very, very creative. Um, but yes, there are so many keto treats, keto friendly products out there that are just filled with processed junk chemicals. Just, just take a look, take a look at the ingredients. If it has more than three, four or five, I, I stay away from it. I, I try to my best to stay away from those things. I want to keep it simple. Me, if I'm going to snack, and that's another thing, I don't believe in snacking. Mm. Okay. Um, I believe I in eating meals. Okay. Um, snacking is something that we have got in our heads as a society that is normal. And it's really not, especially when you're doing intermittent fasting. So if I am going to snack, or let's say I'm on a road trip where I'm not going to be around a kitchen cooking and uh, I want to eat something, I'm going to stick to like beef jerky, very clean source of beef jerky, um, not Slim Jim or Jack's Lynx beef jerky that are just filled with sugar. I'm going to keep the beef jerky very, very clean, which salt and meat. That's it. Uh, protein. Protein is going to keep you full. Protein is going to keep you satiated. So you don't need to keep snacking. That is always, always my go-to when it comes to snacking is find a protein source. Um, and I, tr yes, again, is there some really good keto treats out there? Absolutely. Are they the best for you? Absolutely not. Um, but they do fit the keto friendly um, category. So just be very careful with that. Number one, um, if you don't have to snack, don't snack, just eat a meal. But if you do stick with a clean protein source is always my best recommendation. So talk to us a little bit about how you stay motivated and what your role is as a keto coach or a fast coach. So what would you be kind of telling people to kind of get them to stay on track? This is, this is, this is what, this is my favorite, favorite question of all time. So look, listen, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this motivation is going to come and go. Okay. There are going to be days that we're like, let's go new me, new year. It's January 1st. <laughs> I'm ready to get up. Let's go. Then boom, January 10th comes. It's cold. It's snowing. You're over this. You're overeating healthy. You're over going to the gym. You're over going doing this cardio. That is when discipline comes in. You need to build discipline. Discipline over motivation, right? Discipline needs to be your foundation. Motivation needs to be almost like a supplement. Will motivation help you? Absolutely. Motivation will help you. Motivation will get you through these those tough times but it's not something you can absolutely rely on every single time because motivation is a feeling. Discipline is, is a habit. Discipline is more towards your character, making the decision like, I don't want to go do cardio this morning. I don't feel like doing cardio, but you know what? I'm going to go do it because I'm staying disciplined. How do you stay disciplined? Remember your why. What is your why? Why are you doing this? Are you doing this for yourself? Are you doing this for your kids? Are you doing this for your husband? Are you doing this for your wife? Whatever that may be, find your why. For me, my why has changed over these eight years for, because I didn't have kids. You know, I, I, just, I just had kids over the last couple of years. But when I first started, my why was completely different. And now it's completely shifted to my kids. I want to show my kids uh, the importance of being healthy, the importance of eating the right foods. I want to be able to play with my kids. I want to be able to go run with my kids. My kids are literally a ball of energy. I don't want to be that parent that's like, oh, I see you sit down. I can't, Miha, I can't go play with you, Miha. I can't go outside. I'm tired. I, 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 I don't want to do that. I want to be able to be there for my kids, play with my kids, run around with my kids. And that is my why. So when I have those moments, that I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to eat healthy. I remember why I'm doing this. And so finding your why is very important. It's going to help motivate you, but also 
making these decisions every day to do what you need to do to build that discipline. So when those days come that you're not motivated, doesn't matter. You're going to the gym because you know what you need to do. Hey guys, I'm so excited. My new book, One Meal and a Tasting is out now. And if you order the book on Amazon, just the regular paperback edition, if you go in and make a review, you will get the audio book for free. Send a copy of your receipt to questions at chantelrayway.com and you'll get the audio book right away. Now, have you seen anyone that maybe did the keto diet and then they or maybe they were just doing keto or just doing IF, but then they decided to combine the two and then just had amazing results by doing that combination. Absolutely. I think, you know, when it comes to weight loss, which let's let's be honest why majority of people do the ketogenic diet and why people want to exercise. Um, when they combine the two, it's like the perfect puzzle piece. They complement each other so well. One, because keto is a very low glycemic diet, right? So you're not spiking your blood sugar all day because you're eating high amounts of fats with your meals. Vice versa. You could be in a ketogenic state and not even doing keto if you're intermittent fasting. So think about that. People who are doing IF literally could be in ketosis and they're not even doing keto because they're intermittent fasting. Like you said, you, you you like to go sometimes six, four hours a day. So that means you're going to be intermittent fasting anywhere from 18 to 24 hours throughout the day. Let's say you exercise during that time. You burned up through, the, through your glycogen storage, which now your body has shifted to using ketones as energy. You're in ketosis. But You're not even trying to do keto. So guess what? When you combine the two, it's just like a perfect storm for burning body fat. So yes, for people who want to speed up the weight loss process, I always recommend combining keto with intermittent fasting. Or if you're doing intermittent fasting, combine keto. Your meals, why don't you make them ketogenic meals, high fat meals, so that you were in a constantly in a fat burning, uh, mode. Mm, Okay, great. This next one is from Susie and I can't pronounce your last name, Susie in Sarasota, Florida. She says, first, I love your podcast and you've helped me lose over 60 pounds doing intermittent fasting. I have combined it now with keto, but now I'm stuck. I still have 20 pounds to go and I cannot get rid of the last 20 pounds. What are some things that I am doing wrong? I am currently at 142 pounds and want to get down below 120. Susie in Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. Okay. So So what would be some things that she is not doing that like some tips that you'd say, okay, here's the people when they've got, they've, they've lost the weight. She's lost 60 pounds. Now she's stuck. She's, and I'm telling you, I'm, we get this kind of question. Do you not get this question? Like all the Every time day. it's like Every day. they, they get to this point and they've got that last 20 or last 10 or last 30, whatever it is. And they're like, look, I've been doing all this. I'm stuck. I'm at a plateau. What can I do to get that? Oops. <laughs> get that last 20 pounds off. What yeah. would you say to them? So this is this is always, always my answer to the plateau question, okay? So without knowing Susie, without having much information other than what she just said, you need to take a step back and look at the grand scheme of things. Look at everything. What people think, you know, when they hit that plateau, I'm, I'm eating this, I'm training this, okay, well, what else is going on in your life? Are you stressed out? Are you getting enough sleep? Hormones play a huge part in weight loss and plateaus. So you can have two people doing the same thing, losing the same amount of weight, and then they both stop, right? But this person is very, very, very stressed out. This person is going through a lot of stuff on the back end. When you're stressed, your body produces cortisol. When your body produces cortisol, it's going to stop the weight loss process. So 
take a, take, take a b- bigger picture. Are you tracking your macros? Do you know how much you're eating? Maybe you're in a calorie surplus. Or what a lot of people don't realize, maybe they're in a huge calorie deficit, meaning they are eating so little food, so little calories that their body is almost in a starvation mode and saving everything because they don't know when they're going to get their next meal. And so it stops the it stops the weight loss. Right. So tracking your food, knowing what you're eating, what cup, what type of training are you doing? Are you exercising? Are you not exercising? What type of exercises are you doing? Maybe you need to switch it up. Um, doing some type of hit cardio. If you're not doing hit cardio, I would, I would absolutely recommend doing some type of hit cardio. For those of you who don't know what hit cardio is, it is high um, intensity interval training, meaning you go as hard as you can for ten minutes. Well, as hard as you can for a minute, rest for thirty seconds. As hard as you can for a minute rest for 30 seconds. You do that for about eight to 10 minutes. It's amazing to break. It's amazing tool to break plateaus, but taking a step back, seeing the way you're training, what type of foods are you eating? Okay. Are you eating a lot of dairy? Are you eating a lot of cheese? Dairy tends to, um, stall people out. I mean, yes, you can lose a lot of weight, by incorporating dairy, doing keto, and and having dairy in your diet. But then at a certain point, maybe you need to take that out to get to that extra 10. Um, Again, there are so many reasons why you could be in a plateau. It's never one thing. And people want that one answer, that one size fits all. And it's not that that easy. Take a step back. Track your food. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure you're getting enough water. What type of exercise you're training? Maybe you need to change it up. How are your stress levels at home? Um, Your hormones, things like that. Take a step back, make some adjustments and go from there. And and, and when you find all that out and you make adjustments, is it, is it, are you automatically going to find the answer like that? Maybe, maybe not. Trial and error on your, on your own body is the best way to find out what works for you, right? Just because so-and-so from down the street did this and that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Numbers are simple. People are complicated, okay? So trial and error on yourself is the best way uh, to learning your body, how your body works, and making adjustments and going from there. All right. I have another question from Camelia or Camila in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I love to drink. Don't judge me. I am doing fasting and keto and I need some more keto drinks. I have to drink three to four times a week to be happy. I have a very stressful job and the only advice I need is on what to drink that would be keto friendly to give me some new ideas because I'm stuck in a rut on what to drink. (laughs) <laughs> so she's basically saying like, Whoa. don't tell me not to drink. I'm drinking. I'm drinking sure. three to four times a week. That's not an option. That is what it is. Now, what, what is, what am I going to drink? <laughs> so first of all, no, no, no judgment whatsoever. It's funny when, um, when I do keto, when I was, you know, really hardcore keto, people always ask me, what, Logan, you don't miss like hamburgers you don't miss pizza you don't miss donuts i'm like heck no i don't care about that stuff you know what i miss i miss my damn beer that's what i miss the most Mm -hmm. so absolutely um okay so look just to be completely honest there is no alcohol that is keto friendly theoretically keto friendly okay because alcohol is going to convert sugar and so it's, it's it's just there's no such thing as a keto beer um so you, you, you have to look at it as like, these are your best options if you're doing keto. Number one, any low carb drinks, right? Like a Michelob Ultra, a Miller Lite, things like that that are very low carb. Um, if I have a client who wants to drink the best option now, you gotta be very careful because you what you have to understand is when you have been doing keto, for a very long time and you introduce alcohol, you will get drunk very quick. So please, needless to say, don't drink and drive, prepare for whatever you're gonna do. Um, 
But sticking with hard liquors, with water, or a um, a diet Coke or whatever diet drink or club soda uh, that obviously has no um, – it's just carbonation, right? Just carbonation drink with no sugar in it, uh, uh, like vodka, um, whiskey. Hard liquors are probably going to be your best bet. Um but yeah, just anything low carb is gonna be is gonna be friendly. I know something right now. What's very popular is um, seltzers, low carb seltzers. It seems like everybody is doing them, um, and so you can stick with that. But again, yeah, I mean, just there's so many options out there. I just stay 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 um, away from anything dark. Mostly, like you know, the 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 darker the beer, the more calories it's gonna have, the more carbs it's gonna have. Stick to light, low carb drinks, and you should be fine. And then hard liquors as well. So I'm not a big drinker. I've never have been, just because I like. To, I'm the opposite. So like, if I have my choice to eat my calories or drink the calories, I'd rather eat them. And mm-hmm. so, but so last year I literally could count on my hand how many times I, I drank four times last year all through. Wow. Um, but this year so far, I've actually drank three times so far. <laughs> and the reason is, is because I found this drink. It's actually a low carb margarita. And the reason why I don't, another reason why I don't drink is because I go so fast and so hard all day that I need to wake up the next morning and feel like a million bucks. Yep. And so I, I made this drink and I'll put it in the show notes, but it's, it's basically just tequila, lime juice, and a, a, a jalapeno peppers and ice and a simple, a low carb, simple syrup that's just made with, um, like an organic monk fruit. And so basically it's basically a jalapeno margarita, but it's, it's low carb because there's no sugar in it. It's just made with a little bit of stevia. So it's stevia, tequila, lime juice, and jalapeno peppers. That sounds pretty good. And it is really good. And I can have one and I wake up and I'm like, like I still feel like a million bucks. So for me, for what, even if I do like a half a cup of wine or like this much wine because of the sulfates and whatever, I'll wake up and just not feel like a million bucks. So yeah, yeah. I will put that recipe in our, in the show notes for people if they want to get that recipe, cause it's really, really good. Well, this has been amazing. Tell people, what have I not asked you that you want listeners to know of what they can do to kind of take it to their next level with fasting and keto? Yeah, I think number one, the best way to uh, keep it going is join a community. Join a community with people that are just like you, that want to lose weight, want to better their lives, want to become healthier, and find that community, find that tribe, and and do and and do it together. That is one thing that we absolutely love about the keto community is that we are such a tight niche uh, community that are always encouraging each other, always inspiring each other, which is one of the main reasons why my business partner and I, Matt, uh, developed Fast Coach, the Fast Coach app, um, which you, you can track your fasting times, you can track your ketone levels, your glucose levels, and participate in live and on-demand challenges because People love challenges. Who doesn't love challenges? I love challenges, but I also love doing it with my friends. I love doing challenges with my friends, and it's so fun to do, right? And so it's just another way to hold yourself accountable and make it fun, make it challenging, and doing it together with as a group to keep it going. So you're not you're never alone. You're never on your journey by yourself. You always have someone by your side. Um, whether it's one of the coaches on the fast coach app or whoever, you know, you, whoever you've just connected with in your tribe, but find a community. And, um, you, if anybody who's listening to this or watching this, you can download the fast coach app on the Google and Apple store for free. It's a free app, start tracking, 
track your ketones, track your glucose, join the challenge, find a challenge that you like. There are many challenges, like whether you want to do fasting, whether you're into OMAD. If you don't know what OMAD is, it's one meal a day, which is pretty cool. Um, whether you want to track your glucose, you want to do a, keto, a, a ketosis challenge. How many days can you um, be in ketosis? There's just so many challenges on there, even meditation challenges. So, uh, and there's new challenges every month. It's just a simple, really simple way to stay motivated, stay active and keep you on track. Mm, love it. Well, you guys stay tuned. We have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>